I call Anahila Kanongotaha Sui Sui Ki. Te wā, it's an absolute privilege to be the last speaker on the third reading of the Misuse of Drugs Medicinal Cannabis Amendment Bill. Uh, can I just say, um, I just need to comment to the last speaker. Could somebody open the window? The rhetoric is just suffocating. So, yeah. Anyway, Madam Speaker, um, before I get on to a summary, I, I want to honour all 1,786 New Zealanders who submitted and shared their story with the Health Select Committee. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for your stories because they have contributed to this excellent bill. Uh, Madam Speaker, if all have been mentioned by all the 11 speakers before me, so what I'm going to attempt to do is to summarise some of what has been said. And I begin with the leadership of the Honourable David Clark, and I want to quote uh, uh, exactly what the bill is so that there is no misunderstanding going forward. And I quote, uh, this is from the Minister, this bill introduces an exception and statutory defence for people eligible to receive palliation, to process and use illicit cannabis, and to process a cannabis utensil provides a regulation-making power to enable the setting of standards that products manufactured, imported, or supplied under licence must meet. This schedules cannabidiol so that it is no longer a controlled drug." End, qu end of quote. I want to uh, comment on the Honourable Simon Bridges. He asked the question, what will police do if loose leaf are smoked near a school? He also commented on the um, exceptional years of research done by Dr. Rit Dr. Shane Ritti. But what I want to, in response to um, the Honourable Simon Bridges' uh, question of what will police do if loose leaf are smoked near a school? Well, Madam Speaker, all 1,786 submitters never told us that in their pain and in their dying days, they are outside a school smoking. But can I respond, and I want to quote, can I respond, and I want to quote this from the police who shared at the Select Committee. The police, uh, when, when this was put to them, the police said, police are currently assessing whether or not to lay charges on a case-by-case -case basis on evidence and in accordance with the Solicitor General's guideline, which state the prosecutor must, a, the evidence can be reduced the abduced in court is sufficient to provide a reasonable prospect of conviction, and prosecution is required in the interest of public interest. Can I say to those members, call 911, <laughs> or in our case, 111. I want to uh, commend the leadership of the chair of this select committee, uh, Louisa Wall. Louisa Wall uh, shared with us the, work, the workings of the select committee Within a year, we've come back with this bill and it's now at its third reading. What the, uh, Louisa Wall had commended the, uh, the, the whole of the select committee, which includes everybody, there were seven amendments that were discussed at select committee. And out of seven, five was in the minister's uh, SOP. Five. So in terms of working off a, a, a select committee, I think that that's, that's, that's um, um, commendable. And I want to acknowledge the work of the select committee in terms of the conversations that were held to get this uh, piece of information into or seven amendments. Out of seven, five were um, in the minister's uh, SOP. And also, uh, the Louisa Wall also alerted us to the fact that this will bring economic benefits to Aotearoa New Zealand, highlighting the work of Hikurangi Enterprise. Honourable Michael Woodhouse uh, also commented on police actions if they are smoking at a school. I've already said enough of that. Jenny Marcroft uh, from New Zealand First spoke about the need for high quality and easily accessible um, a, a medicine, a medicinal medicine for people. So she also uh, gave the, uh, she gave uh, an explanation into how New Zealand First have found a coalition to work together, that New Zealand First believes in showing compassion, that this is about showing compassion in terms of bringing in the word palliation, which improves the quality of life with regards to those of our loved ones who are dying. Dr Shane Ritti, uh, focus again on loose leaf. 
He focused on his international research. I say to the, uh, my response to Dr. Shane Litty, maybe it was a little too late, there were nine years you could have had that he could have brought those in. Chloe Schwabrig oh, questioned us, and surely the point of law is, is to keep people safe. And she further stated along her speech that this, is, this bill is how we treat our sick through compassion. The Honourable Nikki Wagner also um, spoke about how Labour had nine years, had nine years in opposition to bring, uh, to come with a detailed bill. Well, I, 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 it baffled me that National had nine years, National had nine years to uh, come up with, with Dr Shane Litty's ideas that I think all speakers of the National Party commented on the excellent research that has been uh, in the dedication of Dr Shane Litty. I think that was an opportunity lost that they could have done in the last nine years. She also talks about uh, requiring careful thought uh, when decisions are made, and I will respond to that later on. Angie Warren Clark talked about palliative care that is different. That when you're in that, uh, 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 when you're in that state of your life, the last thing you want to hear is somebody telling you how long you have to live. So palliative care, when if it's needed, then you take it. Simeon Brown, well, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, talk about that anymore because it was covered by the other speaker as when you're in a rehabilitative when, when, when you are smoking outside a rehabilitation premises well if I'm in my dying days the last place I would be is again not smoking at a school not smoking uh, uh, or taking illicit cannabis outside as uh, uh, some sort of a rehabilitation place I want to talk about um, Dr. Liz Smith uh, Dr. Um, Liz Craig, Dr. Liz Craig told us that people who came to the select committee shared about the suffering and in chronic pain, shared about how their loved ones or themselves had gone through this. She also alluded to the fact to us that this is not a de facto, a de facto legalizing cannabis. She said doctors can already prescribe medicinal cannabis. Of course, David Seymour talked about the unreality uh, permeating from uh, uh, the other speaker on the other side, and that the real danger here is synthetic cannabis. That is the real danger. Dr. Nick Smith um, spoke honestly about an assessment, tightly regulated, providing tremendous good. Or he talked about New Zealand research. He gave us all those researches. But Madam Speaker, I want to end and I want to quote the next steps were from the minister. I can add, my, uh, I can add uh, a lot into the conversation, but I think uh, this piece of legislation needs to actually pass so those who are in need of palliation can receive uh, what they can under this bill. And I want to quote the minister because I think it will clarify what the next steps are if the, uh, uh, if the opposition didn't hear it. So, um, and I quote, the Ministry will release a consultation paper on the scheme early next year. This consultation paper will seek feedback on quality standards, licensing system and the regulations needed to establish the scheme. The misuse of drugs legislation already provides a framework for licensing the production of medicinal cannabis products. The scheme makes, a, makes use of the existing framework, framework and does not add unnecessary compliant costs. The Ministry will develop the quality standards in consultation with experts. The Minister, as he said, convening a medical cannabis oversight panel to provide feedback and expert advice on developing of the scheme. End quote. Madam Speaker, there's no need for me to delay this any further. It has been an absolute honour. This is the first bill as a first member of parliament that have gone from inception to now passing its third reading. I want to acknowledge all the stories that's been shared, uh, shared uh, intimately with the select committee. I want to acknowledge the leadership of the coalition, uh, coalition part government and its supportive partner. And Madam Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. The, the question is that the motion be agreed.